Should you buy a used, cheap mini computer or should you spend a lot more and get one of the most powerful ones on the market? Well in today's video we're going to take a look and hopefully find out, so let's unbox them. I'm going to be comparing an old, cheap Dell Wise 5070 against the absolute beast that is the Geekom IT15, kindly provided by Geekom. An older, used mini PC can be purchased regularly for under 100 Australian dollars. This one costing me 76, including postage. Thankfully, a decent amount of bubble wrap was used, leaving us with an undamaged, aesthetically pleasing device. It's somewhat larger than I was expecting, but at least there was no shortage of ports on the front. This is also very clean, perhaps it was barely used to begin with. The mini PC we're comparing it against has some pretty insane specifications. The Intel Core Ultra 9 285H, 32GB of 5600MHz DDR5 memory, 2TB of storage, and capable Intel Arc 140T graphics. This represents one of the best tiny PCs, at least on paper, that you can currently buy. Will it be worth the money? Hopefully, I'll be able to determine that in this video. I've heard a lot about Geekom and their tiny computers over the last few years, and well, there's no going back now. The seal has been broken. Oh, wow, this is really tiny. I thought it was going to be a lot bigger. But I must say, it feels really solid with a decent amount of heft to it. It's also a computer that comes with a number of accessories and cables. Great if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of that stuff just lying around. The 120 watt power supply is also impressively small. How do they make them this size? And at the time of writing this script, you can get this exact spec IT15 for $1430 Australian dollars. And does the performance and convenience size justify the price? Let's find out. I've been fascinated by tiny computers for my whole life, and it's pretty incredible just how much value can be had on the cheap end, and just how much performance you can get out of the best ones currently available. The CPU in here has a whopping 16 cores, 6 performance, 8 efficiency, and 2 described as low powered. A power efficiency may not be as important for a tiny desktop, but it can actually be powered by a USB-C power bank with its 100 watt input. The number of inputs is also pretty impressive. Fast SD card support is great for someone like me. The Dell Wise does also have a decent selection of ports, but being several years old, obviously it's missing a lot of the latest ones. And we'll see just how easy it is to upgrade and disassemble them later in the video as well. And as I quickly learnt, you don't access the RAM and storage by removing the top cover. Anyway, let's Let's see just how easy it is to set up and get running. This has Windows 11 installed, which as I previously learnt does take a little while to get running at first. And be prepared for the computer to restart several times, download many updates and of course try to sell you on multiple Microsoft subscriptions that you likely don't need or want. You could easily mount this to the back of the display using the included vase mount. However, I think this tiny PC looks great sitting right on the desk, and immediately it's quite obvious just how responsive this machine is, and I'm sure that the SSD is lightning quick. I'll test the exact speeds later in the video. How does the Dell Wise 5070 compare? Well, this one was sold without an operating system, so unsurprisingly, the 64GB SSD lacks any data and does not boot. We've got 8GB of DDR4 RAM and a 1.5GHz J4105 processor, not bad for a cheap little thin client. And this would have likely come with Windows 10, and since I have a copy right here, I think I'll use it. And I just love the fact that I own an official Microsoft install USB. The Dell immediately recognized the installer quickly after turning it on, and a short time later I had a very outdated version of Windows up and running, with a number of drivers and updates still to install. And to get some internet connectivity I simply used a little USB Wi-Fi adapter, since this system doesn't come with Wi-Fi built in. With a heap of applications installed, how well do these two tiny machines compare? Is the pocket size Geekom worth the much higher price? Well, let's find out. Starting off with Unigen Heaven, which benchmarks graphical performance, the Dell Wise scores just 131 points. Uh, honestly, that's far lower than I was expecting. And on the other hand, the Geekom IT15, with its Intel Arc 140T graphics, managed a far higher score. Time for some modern gaming. Counter-Strike 2 was a challenge to even get remotely playable on this system, due to the low-powered CPU and integrated graphics. Around 10 to 15 frames per second was all I could manage, even at 720p low graphical settings. Settings. With identical settings, the Geekom easily exceeded 120 frames per second, sometimes hitting over 200. Even at 1080p high graphical settings, it still managed a very playable frame rate, hovering at around 60 FPS. 
The cheap little Dell couldn't handle PUBG at all. 720p lowest settings was appallingly slow, which is to be expected given the low wattage of the processor within. And those exact same settings unsurprisingly yielded a far higher frame rate using the Geekom. And cranking the resolution to 1080p and graphical settings to high was still very much playable. And once I knew it ran well enough, I tried a casual match with some real players, and this was totally fine. Another game I love to play is Beam NG Drive, which surprisingly ran at all on the Wise 57E. Once again, 720p, lower settings to give the system any chance at all. The IT15 was able to pull around 250 frames per second with the same resolution and settings. And how about some graphics that look a little bit nicer? 1080p, normal settings, was still very much playable, hovering at around 50 frames per second. Adding in traffic does lower the frame rate slightly, but this is still quite impressive for a tiny computer. What's also impressive? The fact that the Dell can even run Fallout 4 at all. About 10 frames per second is all I got, even at 720p low graphical settings. This is not what I would call playable. And the IT15 with those exact same settings far exceeds 100 frames per second, which once again is to be expected. And bumping it up to 1080p high preset, it still exceeds 50 FPS. I would call this quite playable. So gaming is clearly not what the Dell Wise is for, but it surprisingly ran some of the games I tested. The limiting factor is the 10 watt CPU, which during a stress test maintained a boost clock of 2.2 gigahertz, even though there is no fan for cooling. Yes, this tiny PC is virtually silent as a result. It scores 506 points in Cinebench R20, with the CPU reaching only 71 degrees. The Geekom with its Intel Core Ultra 9, wow, that processor is insanely powerful, completing the same test incredibly quickly, thanks to its far higher core count. This would make for an excellent video editing computer, so I tried out Adobe Premiere Pro. The addition of the high-speed full-size SD card slot is super convenient as well. Rendering this video took 7 minutes and 16 seconds, somehow slightly slower than my 5-year-old M1 13-inch MacBook Pro, which took only 6 minutes and 37 seconds. When it comes to the SSD speeds, the Dell is totally fine for a cheap little thin client, but the Geekom's drive is insanely fast. This is truly an impressive little machine. You could totally power it using a battery bank, thanks to the 100 watt power delivery input. The included power supply is rated at 120 watts, slightly higher than the 100 watt USB-C input, but the lower wattage doesn't seem to impact performance. Even while playing BeamNG Drive, for instance, it doesn't get anywhere near the 100 watt limit, and I can't seem to see any difference in performance, making this a viable option for portable, high performance computing. But what's inside these little machines? How serviceable and upgradable are they? I was a little unsure how to take apart the Wise 5070, and one quick search online later, it turned out that I had to slide off the top casing, revealing the simple internals. The CPU being cooled passively, with a large thermal pad used to help dissipate heat through to the metal casing. Even with the compact size, there's room for a Wi-Fi card, a VGA connector, and some other expansion options. And yes, this machine does have a fairly usable built-in speaker. While the RAM is upgradable, there seems to be some uncertainty online regarding just how much you can install. The 8GB currently in there is really the minimum you can get by with these days. The low capacity included solid state drive can also be easily upgraded. If it wasn't already obvious, I had to run most of the games from an external SSD. Since this has USB 3, external storage speeds are actually quite decent. While not powerful, this is a solidly built little computer with some upgradability. And for basic computing and even full HD YouTube playback, this is definitely still a viable option. The Geekom IT15 packs quite a bit inside this very compact case, and after loosening off four Phillips head screws on the base, I gently lifted it off, which reveals a heatsink for the super fast SSD and also a connector and space for extra SATA storage. I really wasn't expecting this given how small the computer is. The Wi Fi card, NVMe N.2 storage, and RAM are all removable, and I'm curious to see how the processor inside is cooled. And after removing a few more screws, the casing easily separated. I tried to be quite gentle since I wasn't following a disassembly tutorial. And considering the overall size of the machine, the fan seems quite adequate. And underneath that fan, we see the cooling system as well as the CR2032 BIOS battery, which is thankfully removable. Both of these devices impress me, for vastly different reasons. The Wise 5070 representing a truly affordable entry into basic computing and web browsing. The Geekom, while a lot more expensive, provides excellent performance in a tiny, versatile package. Both of them have great build quality, and I had a lot of fun checking them out and putting them to the test. And I think we've reached a point where a tiny PC like this has decent enough graphical power to really game well. 
For many years, these sorts of computers lacked when it came to GPU performance, but now I'd say that this is a totally viable option for gaming, video editing, and more. Most mini computers, cheap, new, old, whatever, are gonna do basic tasks totally fine, but if you need one that has good graphical performance, the Geekom I showed you today is a pretty good option, but at some point, you've probably gotta weigh up whether it's worth just building a small form factor, normal desktop computer that may cost less and probably have better upgrade potential, or definitely have better upgrade potential and likely more performance for each dollar you spend. In saying that, RAM chip prices are just going everywhere at the moment, so it's honestly hard to say what would be a better option or value like a month from now, because we'll have to see where the prices head. And I also want to see how much the new Steam machine is going to cost here in Australia. My bet is around 900 Australian dollars for the base model. But we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, I think this is probably the last video I'm going to release for the year. I hope you've enjoyed. I had a lot of fun making it. I'll see you in the next year. You have a good one and happy holidays.